Will you please be seated? Good morning. On behalf of the family, welcome to the celebration of life for John Hatcher. I'm Tom Robbins. I had the privilege of being John's pastor for eight years and his friend for 25 years. You know John, that's why you're here. You know his sense of humor. If I'd have thought about this ahead of time and all the people here, I would have arranged to have an offering taken because John would have really enjoyed that. <laughs> Dying Christ destroyed our death. Rising Christ restored our life. Christ will come again in glory. As in baptism, John Hatchell put on Christ. So in Christ may he be clothed with glory. Here and now, dear friends, we are God's children. What we shall be has not yet been revealed, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Those who have this hope purify themselves as Christ is pure. Will you hear this word of grace? Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I died and behold, I am alive forevermore. And I hold the keys both of hell and of death. Because I live, you shall live also. Friends, we've gathered here today to praise God and to witness to our faith as we celebrate the life of John Hatchell. We come together in grief, acknowledging our human loss. May God grant us grace that in pain we may find comfort, in sorrow, hope, in death, resurrection. Will you hear these words from the 23rd Psalm? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. The second scripture reading today comes from the book of Revelation, the 21st chapter. And know that the Bible doesn't give us much of a description of what heaven actually is, but the very best one is in Revelation 21. Will you hear these words? I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, 
I am making all things new. And what we celebrate today, John's new, and he is complete, and he is whole. John K. Hatchell was born November 5, 1942, in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. He went to heaven Thursday, July the 21st, 2022. He is preceded in death by his parents and survived by his wife, Linda, and daughter, Barbara, of College Station. And now for remembrances, we'll have first Reverend Fred Winslow and then after Fred, Curtis Cleveland. I would like to thank Linda for the opportunity uh, to be able to speak a word about uh, John. There was a gentleman in our church who was quite needy and unable to always make ends meet. And uh, in order to have heat in the summer, he needed uh, to have some bills paid. So one day John came in and he handed me a an envelope with cash, and he said, take this down to Christie and uh, have her uh, spend it paying for this bill. Uh, but Fred, you are not to tell anyone that I'm doing this. And I said, John, I think I know why I tell me. He said, I don't want anybody to know that I really have a kind heart. <laughs> that was John. Let us pray. O oh God, you have given us birth. You are ever ready to hear our prayer. You know our needs before we ask. So now give to us your grace, that as we shrink before the mystery of death, we may see the light of eternity. Speak to us once more your solemn message of life and death. Help us to live as those who are prepared to die. And when our days are gone, enable us to die as those who go forth to live. So that living or dying, our life may be in you. And that nothing in life or in death or in creation or in heights or depths will ever be able to separate us, ever be able to separate us from your great love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Linda and Barbara, it's indeed an honor to be here. <clears throat> Tough lineup following two preachers, though. <clears throat> Tom, you said some nice things about John. Um, I know Linda's going to agree with me. I think John's passion was to be a race car driver. <laughs> if any of you ever rode on the interstate with John Hatchell, that's all I have to say. <clears throat> It is an honor to share greetings and thoughts of gratitude for John Hatchell from the TSTC administration, faculty, staff, and Board of Regents. Each of us who worked alongside John would want you to know that we all admired and respected John, <clears throat> first as a mentor, then as a friend, and as an ethical compass. Now, what I mean by ethical compass was John was so knowledgeable about the municipal and state regulatory requirements that the TSTC regents and administrative leadership always relied on John's opinion about path forward on any project that we pursued. Now, personally, my relationship goes back 30 years. I got you, John. Tom, got you, Tom. <clears throat> I was a young, energetic, 
but very inexperienced industry recruiter for Waco. I would go offer industry prospects, street extensions, water service, sewer service, electrical connections, natural gas connections. <clears throat> and then I'd go to the third floor of City Hall and I'd sit down with my mentor, John Hatchell, and we'd try to figure out how to make those things happen. Sometimes I'd have a new idea and I'd run those by John. And I'll never forget him giving me a big smile, as we all know from John, and he would say, you can't do that. <laughs> <clears throat> On one project with my Chamber Economic Development Chairman, Willard Still, we went to the headquarters of an industrial prospect in Wisconsin who was very interested in opening a new manufacturing plant in Waco. After showing a site rendering and making the promises of a street extension which was required, water service, sewer service, electrical service, and natural gas service, the prospect agreed to come to Waco and take a look at the site we proposed. So then several community leaders were in attendance at a luncheon we had with a prospect. And I'm pretty sure there's a couple of you sitting in this room who were at that luncheon. <clears throat> and we talked to the owner about the deal, the site, and how excited we were to have his prospective new manufacturing plant in Waco. As the lunch progressed and things went well, the prospect said, <clears throat> I think we have a deal, but I have one more requirement. You see, the, the site we were proposing was basically an open cornfield in the West Waco Industrial District. And the prospect said, I need 50 trees planted in that open cornfield. So with no authority to do so, Woodard and I said, yes, sir, we'll get your 50 trees. So guess what I did the next day? I went to the third floor, City Hall. I sat down with John Hatchell, and we talked about the incentives that had been promised, a street extension, which was necessary, water service, sewer service, electrical service, and natural gas. And I said, John, <clears throat> there's one more thing we promised. I said, the prospect wants 50 trees planted in that open cornfield. And John said, you promise what? <laughs> <clears throat> now, <clears throat> that was before WEDMAC. What WEDMAC does, it provides an economic development incentive pool of money to go do things that are necessary to close a deal. We didn't have an incentive pool to work with. So, we talked, John and I talked about what was needed. The prospect didn't want just saplings. He wanted eight foot trees, three foot bases, and he wanted us to plant them in that cornfield so that the aesthetics of his site looked better. Now, <clears throat> I can't disclose our trade secret on how we got the tree deal done. But I can take you to the West Waco Industrial District, show you where an industry located over 20 years ago, and in front of that industry are 50 beautiful trees that were planted for that industry. Now moving forward seven years ago, John and I crossed paths again as members of the TSDC Board of Regents. John has always been my mentor on the board and he served as two, he served two chairs, chair, two terms as chair on the board. And then I was honored to follow him as board chair of the TSTC Board of Regents. Everyone here is soon going to hear about, you're going to learn about TSTC's major expansion of workforce training facilities in seven locations across the state of Texas. 
two of those facilities will be in Waco. What I want you to remember when you read about each of these projects is that John Hatchell's fingerprints are on every single one of them. TSTC's leadership team and Board of Regents relied heavily on John's insight to help make those new projects happen. And all of us have been honored to work alongside John. Linda, we love John Hatchell. We're going to miss John Hatchell. But it's an honor to have served alongside him. Thank you.
in Paul's letter to the church at Philippi, he says these words. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Paul says, rejoice in the Lord always. Well, sometimes it's easier said than done. Funerals and memorial services have a surreal aspect about them because what you're experiencing right now is a paradox. On the one hand, what we say is, John's complete, he's whole, he's happy, he's everything God wants him to be, and that's something to celebrate. And at the same time, what we say is, this is a day of extreme grief. It always is when someone who is loved dies because they'll be missed, regardless of the circumstance. And you're gonna miss your husband. You're gonna miss your father. You're going to miss your friend. But remember, death does not have the final say. God does. And through Jesus Christ, you know exactly where John is. He's home. Now, don't get me wrong. I think the moment John walked through the gates of heaven and started reorganizing heaven, God said, what have I done? <laughs> but this is a day of celebration. And that's what you have to remember. Now, when I, we first talked and I heard about this, it caught me completely by surprise. I didn't know this was coming, and this is life. Many times we don't know what is right around the corner. But what we do know is whatever is out there in the future, God's already there waiting for us. And John's in a good place. And that is what we celebrate today. Now, John was a man who genuinely lived a life of service, not just with his profession, but with the way he lived. I can still remember when we were at Austin Avenue, the Meals on Wheels kitchen, and John would come and pick up all these meals to take to all these people who were in desperate need. And I was always entertained watching John try and get all those styrofoam boxes into a Corvette. It just was not made for something like that. But by George, he was bound and determined that's what he was gonna do. And I'll never forget one conversation we had. He'd made all the deliveries, he'd come back up to the church and he and I were talking. And one elderly woman that he had dropped off a meal for, he asked if she needed anything, if she was okay. And she asked if he would come in and change her light bulbs because she could not do it. She had no help whatsoever. And what she had done for months is stay in one room until the light bulb went off. And when it burned out, she would go to the next room. And then when it burned out, she would go to the next. John was so grateful to be able to help that woman. And it was not about saying, look at what I've done. It was about the fact that God had used him for someone in the world who, who really was helpless. Now that defines John for me. Now don't get me wrong, I have a couple of grudges with John and when we get to heaven I'll talk about him. One of them, uh, just so you know, uh, you already know John loved very fast cars and one day out in the church parking lot, he was showing my wife his Corvette and she was just enamored with this. And the next thing I know, they're both in his car, zipping up and down the streets in Waco. And when you get back to the parking lot, my wife announces that she wants a Corvette. So your husband, your father cost me a lot of money, okay? <laughs> 
And I, I know what Jesus says about forgiveness, how it's mandatory, but I think that part of the Bible is overrated, just so you know that. <laughs> but what we do today is celebrate. John will be missed. But remember the big picture. This is not the end. It's not the end for him. It's not the end for you. You will see him again. And in the scheme of eternity, your separation from each other is nothing more than the blink of an eye. That doesn't mean life is easy. Grief, grief takes a long time. So in those moments when you feel enveloped, when you're just overwhelmed, what would your husband, what would your father want you to focus on? Your pain or the fact that he is happy and you will see him again? These are hard times. Funerals and memorial services always are. But through Jesus Christ, this is a good day. Let us pray. Dear gracious Heavenly God, we thank you for John Hatchell and the extraordinary difference he has made in this world. We pray that you comfort his family and friends and all who mourn his passing. Remind them this is not the end, but a new beginning, and that one day they too will be part of your family reunion in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Family, friends, will you affirm the life of John Hatchell, the life he once led and the life he now leads? Will you say amen? amen. Just a word of instruction, there's going to be the benediction and then during the postlude, the family will be led out. You're asked to stay here in the sanctuary seated until the postlude concludes, and then you are dismissed to go to the fellowship hall where you will be able to greet the family. So will you please bow for the benediction? Now will you hear these words spoken by the prophet Isaiah? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youth will faint and be weary and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. May God bless you. Amen.